Okay. Yeah, um, in regards to your your little rant thing there, I don't, I didn't know what to say because I was just me, trying man. to not touch that one. Why? Yeah. Could you at least like try and temper it? I, Jesus. I was when you I, don't I didn't say know how to come at it. <laughs> look, man, when you don't say anything at all and you're just silent, you make me look crazy. You've done that I, one other time on the show. Yeah. And and like yeah. even if you're not agreeing with me, that's fine. But like try and like say something when you don't say anything i never look crazier than when you just when there's just silence on the other end and i'm like great great now i look like a lunatic yeah no i know like i know where you were coming from with it but it was it's one of those like topics that you just don't want to touch like yeah in, I a, know. in a public forum that's i was just like I, I don't know what to even begin to say other than i'm not touching it so it was one of those where i was rolling down the hill already but I thought I could get somebody to back me up at least a little bit. Just a tread, please. <laughs> please, you just can't be silent, even if you're like, I'm crazy. I, I feel like we should just like, I don't know, title the episode something like, like, warning it gets weird or like <laughs> awkward ahead. Just do like, if we could somehow make awkward turtle a gif that would be the <laughs> thumbnail. <laughs> Time to get your fix. It's a horrible gaming podcast. It's not good. It's not great. Horrible gaming podcast. It's not even what you would call fair. It's really not that good. Gaming Podcast. Hello, my name is Zach Rye with Old Man Gaming. You have decided to tune into another horrible gaming podcast. With me, as always, is Neil, aka Tiny Wizard. And uh, yeah, uh, so as usual, we do this with every ounce of free time we have. My kid is watching a tablet right next to us, so the quality is what the quality is. That's our disclaimer for this show. Uh, and then before we get into the meet and greet, uh, meet, uh, meet and greet that you always say meet and greet. Why do I, when say you that? talk about the meat of it, I don't know why. I don't know why I do that. Um, apparently that has angered. My <laughs> uh, so some credits, Mark Bell. Uh, thanks to all the, him for all the original graphics you see, if you're watching the YouTube version, and then thank you to Nick Van Sliders, my brother, for all of the original music here and on the station as Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right, so that brings us to our first, uh, our, our first man. I'm sorry, guys. I'm out of it today. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Um, our first segment, which is fan traction. That's where we talk to you guys, the fans. We ask you guys questions. We read any comments we can from YouTube or previous episode or Discord or any of the places that you can contact us. We also decide the Horrible Arena event winner from last week. So with that said, uh, let's get into it. Uh, we start with uh, Kevin because he had... A lot to say last week. Glad to hear from you, Kevin. Um, you know, it's weird. Like, he, he comments, like, a ton, and then I'm like, oh, God, more Kevin comments. But then when he has those weeks where he doesn't comment at all, I'm like, have we lost our biggest fan? You know? <laughs> You're sending mixed signals. Uh, right. Well, that's that's possible. Uh, <laughs> screen tear happens from a mismatch of refresh rate, and the FPS... Uh, the PC or console puts out resolution simply affects how clear the picture will look at a given size. Kev, we, we never had a question as to what caused screen tell. I, I, I need more information as to why you decided to write that there. Cause that doesn't make sense to me. Um, oh, oh like, I was just going to say the, <clears throat> we the console, but we never failed to understand what screen tear was. Well, I think uh, what he was alluding to is the fact that I don't think we've actually ever me mentioned it before. Unless There's a game has a mentioned a, screen tear, we might well, not have no, described what it was, but no, what I was, what I was about to say is I don't think we've mentioned this fact before, but, um, the consoles, unless the game is locked at a certain frame rate, it will scale. 
So <clears throat> if a game is locked at 120 frames a second, if you don't have 120 fr- uh, 120 hertz refresh, then you're going to have issues. But if a game is not locked and can scale down to 30 or 60, whatever your TV is, then you have that ability. It just depends on the game itself. And that's a, a point that I don't think we've ever brought up before. No, that's true. I won't argue with that. Uh, okay, so then um, Kayla, Neil gets my vote this week, and I'm voting because I wanted to, not because someone told me to. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Kayla, you definitely spite voted for your husband. I just want you to know that. I, there's no world in which I believe that you picked his weird Battle Royale game over my awesome Sky Exploration game, but that's fine. I uh, tried to put Baby in a corner, and I paid for it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Um. Kev also voted. He said, I would definitely play Neil's game, but if it were same day, I'm buying Zach's first. Point old man. Sorry, Neil. However, Neil gets another win because Phil uh, said my vote is for Crawl Roy- uh, Royale. Because <laughs> you kept saying it weird. Uh, I as- was doing everything weird that day. <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy day. As I'm not big on exploration day. So you got another win, even though there's no way you should have. But that's fine. That's fine. I'm salty about this one. I'm not going to lie. Oh, that's okay. I'll give you – you'll you'll have your chance today. Oh, I will definitely have my chance today. I've gone all out on today's. You'll uh, probably – I think you'll get it this time because I didn't get a chance to fully type out my uh, my pitch. So it's only half typed. Yeah, I'm very excited for my one today. Um, all right, so back to the normal comments. We have uh, Kev Tutal. Consoles are just crappy PCs. <laughs> it kind of feels that way nowadays, honestly. Right, it's true. Um, well, I, I, I wouldn't have said that before this upcoming generation, honestly, because there was just like the way it worked just was fundamentally different in my opinion. But now it just kind of feels like they're so overbuilt. They're basically just crappy PCs. Yeah. Um, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, older systems were more like a streamlined gaming experience. Yeah. As compared to PC, which, which is a great gaming experience, but it was never like streamlined like a console was. And now I feel like PCs have streamlined their stuff more and consoles have gotten less streamlined. So they're becoming slowly the same thing. Right. Um, Kev Too Tall then says Miles Morales was started as an expansion to the PS4 Spider Man game. It was never a PS5 exclusive pared down. Uh, to which uh, uh, Phil Billy also jumped in and said, Thank you, Kev. I wanted to fire that shot at Mr. Steel, but you are 100% right. Miles Morales was originally an expansion to a PS4 game, not the next gen PS5 game. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, again, don't. I, I, you guys are right. I appreciate that. Um, don't want to start any flame wars in the comments, though. Well, you know what, though? I think that that's just a testament to our growth as a channel, given the fact that now the fan base of this channel has begun to fight with each other. Yeah. yeah. And not just us. When, when <laughs> that happens, when that happens, that's that that's how you know you've made it as a YouTube channel. Absolutely. Um. <laughs> your your uh, credentials are just uh, measured by how much hate you end up creating in the world, whether accidental or on purpose. Hey, as long as it doesn't <laughs> stay as a strictly toxic community, you're right. good. Right, right. Uh, Kev Tutal just said, then said, uh, you had to talk to me twice. Awesome. I feel the love. I think we mentioned him twice. I don't know exactly who this person to. The, uh, I think he was referring to the Lost episode. Mm, <clears throat> yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, Phil Billy then says, happy birthday, Neil. That's right, everybody. Last week was Neil's birthday. Happy birthday, Neil. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, then, uh, let me see here. Then Phil Billy says, Zach, I'm not, not mad about the on the hunt spoiler, but I will keep that free slap in the face in my back pocket for a rainy day. Oh man. To which I, to which I commented slaps giving dot, dot, dot. (laughs) 
Uh, Kev Tutal then said, I will look into it for Games Pass. It's easy in Steam. There is a menu option. I, I do want to say he did look into it, and I've actually talked to him since. And, uh, yeah, we figured it out. So it's very easy to move stuff on the PC. There were a couple of things that they don't, like – tell you how to do it's one of those things where it's like it's super easy to do if you know how to do it if you don't know how to do it there's no way you're gonna figure it out you know ah uh, yeah so um so that I, I i still want to i still think it holds up that it's not as easy to move stuff just because even though it's easy there's no way like you'd have to look it up you know yeah uh, and then kept to tall finally uh oh no that was it we already read that so we read them all that's it. That's the fans' reaction. You got the win, and uh, yeah. All righty. We didn't ask a question last week, did we? No, no. No. I think we asked the question, do people want us to ask questions? And I feel like since nobody said yes, uh, we should probably ask, stop asking questions. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I mean, I'm going to ask a question when I feel it necessary, but I, I don't think we need to ask one every week. <laughs> Horrible Gaming Podcast. So our first talking point today, everyone, is, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of little news. Not a lot of big news, but we're going to pick a couple to maybe talk about uh, on a whole. And the first one would be uh, GameStop and Microsoft have entered into a relatively strange partnership. Um, so basically what's going to happen is, and when this first broke, everybody was like, oh my God, Microsoft is buying GameStop. That's not what's happening. What's happening is Microsoft wants GameStop to use Office 365, basically, uh, which is very confusing to me as to why that's the goal. I mean, I don't well, know. I, I have a couple of thoughts on this. I'll, I'll throw it to Neil first, though. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, the, the Office 365 thing is just a piece of it. Uh, as a part of this, Microsoft is also going to be selling the Xbox All Access subscription, which right. is the financing and everything, through GameStop. Right. So now which is you can, you can, you know, get sign up for All Access through Microsoft, or you can physically walk into a GameStop and say, I would like to finance an Xbox, please. Well, and so that's... that's that's a that's really the, good thing too. Right. Yeah. So I like I think that that's that's a good move. As for the Office 365 stuff, um it, it's it's I think it's whatever. I mean, th from what I understand, the system that they had used up until this point was somewhat antiquated. Right. And they didn't really have a unified sort of platform to go through and do all of their business. They were jumping between different things. There's, They have like the iPad along with their computers and this, that, and the other thing. I think it's going to streamline the business and it's probably going to help them as a company out yeah. in the long run in that regards. But honestly, the biggest news to come out of this is the fact that you can sign up for xbox all access in a store now the all access thing is amazing because uh, before that the only place you could get all access was either online or you had to go into a microsoft store specifically um and that i think that was one of the biggest things that the all access program was missing is that it really wasn't easy to adopt or or become a part of you know and if right. you're making that impulse buy if you wake up that morning and go you know what i want a new system today um, you have a lot of time to think about it, <laughs> you know. Right. Instead of just driving to GameStop and getting enrolled, I I think that's that's a big win for Microsoft. However, I do want to say I was a little bit let down because when I saw the headlines for this, I got really excited because GameStop is a terrible company. Uh, we've talked about it often on the channel, and just before he says it. Uh, Neil's views are his own and no one else's, uh, nor anybody that he may or may not know in real life. Correct? Correct. Okay. So with that out of the way, uh, they're a terrible company that does terrible things, and they've been trying to sell themselves forever. There's no value in them, so they can't sell themselves because they're a terrible company. And I, I was actually excited about this. I was like, you know, Microsoft – Say what you want about them. They're a better company. They're more forward thinking than GameStop is. I would. I was excited about a company coming in and making GameStop not be such a a a, a, 
just a terrible place, you know? Um, so I almost was let down because Microsoft didn't do that. Microsoft just wanted to get that all access. And, you know, the business decision is probably a sound one because GameStop is not going to be around in five years. But um, still, you see what I'm saying? Do you kind of agree with me or... Yeah, no, I, I definitely uh, <clears throat> I agree. I think GameStop's pro problems, though, are a lot of it because it leans on a business model. They cater to to people like us who were younger at one point and right. relied on trading in games mm -hmm. to be able to get new games. Right. So they established that base, but they didn't develop beyond that. So now there are younger kids, you know, beginning to game and all of their stuff can, they are used to the digital marketplaces. Mm -hmm. They're used to free to play games, stuff like that. So, I mean, a lot of those kids have access to games that we never had back in the day. So I feel right. like that's a detriment to their overall business model. That's why I was excited whenever they announced like, the remodel that they were like turning them into like social spaces right. that also sell games granted i mean that's kind of been put on hold given the certain the the current climate of the world um <clears throat> but yeah i i not a great year for social i spaces. don't yeah no i i don't want gamestop to leave because i still i'm still one of those people like whenever i go to pre-order a game anything like that i will go to gamestop i won't go to like walmart amazon anything like that just because i feel like it's a sense of you know brand loyalty and that's kind of like what i've always known but again right. that also goes back to the problem of well they establish themselves with me but not the younger generation well and the way they have established themselves with a the younger generation uh it's kind of like shysty snake oil salesman. Like true. Yeah. I mean, every piece of news that has come out about them probably in the last two or three years is terrible. <laughs> like, like absolutely terrible. So anybody you're, who's getting into gaming is seeing that. And they're like, I'm not going to give them the money, you know, right. right. It established with people like us because we're older and we've been th through the game stop, you know, but like, I mean, even us, though, like, I'm not giving any more money to GameStop. I already made that decision. Like, I, I'm I'm done with GameStop. They have just – I just hear more and more crap about them. And aside from the terrible stuff, the terrible business practices that I don't want to contribute to anymore, uh, there is a thing about it being a sound investment. If you make a pre-order with GameStop and GameStop closes, you don't get that money back. It's gone. I mean, I'm pretty sure that they have to refund your pre-order. They do not. I mean, it depends on the situation. I mean, it does depend many, on the situation. For many sure, horror but... stories of somebody or pre-ordering at a store that store doesn't exist anymore, and you not being able to get your money back. I'll tell you right now. I'm glad I didn't have any pre-orders at the store up the street. My 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 GameStop, the one that just shut down overnight without any warning or notification. You know. Well, in that regard, what they'll do is they will transfer your pre-order to another location. They do not always do that. There are plenty I'm... of horror stories out there. It is very easy. I mean, just talking about the fact maybe they'll be better at it now with Office 365, but, I mean, just look them up. Look up the horror stories. There's plenty where they lose the information or it's gone because that store ceased to exist and they didn't transfer in the right way or whatever, like... They're a, they're a terrible company that doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah, I think they're – they I know that their stock rallied after this information came out. And yeah. they also said once they got the new um, – it was the guy who, who made – I think it was BarkBox be like really a big thing who was either added to the panel or like was made the new CEO of GameStop. He said right. that he wants – Am uh, wants it to be like the Amazon of video games and stuff like that, which is great. You know, that's great in theory. I would love to see how they're going to do that. 
Um, but I mean, they have been making some moves since the pandemic started. I mean, their online sales have really skyrocketed as opposed to brick and mortar stores. But right. then, you know, it does that that does kind of lean more into the quote Amazon side of things because they could very easily just transition to strictly online. But what? I mean, that's that's a whole nother right. going down a whole nother separate business rabbit hole. And their you know, PR during the pandemic was atrocious. Like, <clears throat> Not they, good. Yeah, they that... refused to shut down. They tried to sell hand, hand sanitizer, like all sorts of insane things that they did during the uh, the pandemic that that I think undoes a lot of that, which is sad. I, I will say, yeah, they did see a spike after the Microsoft, but of course they're going to see a spike because Microsoft just got involved, you know? Right. I just I, and, I wish Microsoft had gotten involved more. I wish Microsoft was just owned, uh, just owned GameStop. And I, don't get me wrong. I know everybody out there is like, oh, then they'd just be a, a Xbox store. No, no, no. They'd sell everything. I, I really need to release my terrible talk on exclusivity. I don't think exclusivity is right. I don't think it should exist anywhere. So, like, I wouldn't want it to be exclusive. I just want that company to be – I want that company to be something that I could rely on again, and I don't. I, I feel like it's a bad investment to give my money to them. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, like all of my stuff we typically get through because I like the convenience of the ability to pre order something, but also still like go to the store and pick it up. Like, I know, uh, one of my old managers at uh, the place that I work at, uh, he pre-ordered God of War on the PlayStation 4 back when it came out, but he mm. pre-ordered it through Amazon. And depending on when they decide to deliver, they won't just leave certain things, in his case, the game, just in the mailbox, whatever. They physically have to have somebody sign for it. Oh, so. So in that case that he had there, I mean, maybe it was just because he lived in an apartment complex and not yeah. like an actual house, but still like something like that. Like, I don't like that idea because then, you know, I have it, I bought and paid for, but I can't necessarily get it until somebody's home and Amazon decides to bring it, you know? Well, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with that, but honestly, if I'm pre-ordering, I'm pre-ordering digitally directly from the manufacturer, honestly. Uh, because I don't, I don't think you should pre-order physical games. There's just too much that can happen between then and then. You know, the only thing I'll say about pre-ordering physical games is, and I, this was a problem I had with Marvel's Avengers when it came out because I pre-ordered that digitally. Um, is that like the day it comes out, you can go to a store as soon as that store opens and get a copy and bring it home. Whereas there's like a global like turn on, yeah point uh f for the game digitally and a lot of times the game gets turned on digitally like well after your store opens and, <laughs> and you can just go buy it you know yeah that's very frustrating so I, I will give that to physical copies however however uh you know if i'm pre-ordering i'm not pre-ordering a physical copy i don't i don't believe in it you're basically giving money for nothing there's, See, no, there's I, no absolute proof. There's and they really don't have to give you that money back. See, I don't know. I I've not heard. I mean, maybe it's just because I haven't been exposed to any actual instances of it happening. But you know, I've they they've transferred pre-orders to my knowledge to other stores or at least offered the ability to get your money back. I think it also depends too on if it's something that's completely bought and paid for or just a $5 deposit. Cause like I know with my PlayStation five pre-order, they made you put down $50 and still, I mean, if something happened to where you wouldn't get that money back 50 bucks, that's a fair amount of money. Yeah. Uh, but like a $5 game, whatever, but I know I would absolutely be, livid i my playstation 5 pre-orders completely paid for so i would be livid if somebody shut down and like oh well i guess you're just out of 500 plus dollars you know i mean especially in that kind of situation neil where it is a limited stock do you think that they're going to give your copy from another store to you like that that's not going to happen they don't have enough copies 
of the well, system. Well, in in the console you're gonna regard, you're gonna move to the back of the line somewhere else if that if that pre order does go somewhere else. I mean, there's just there's too much to go wrong. And do you really want to give your money? Uh, do you really want to give your money and let them give you an IOU? I mean, well, that that's what it is. You're giving them money. They IOU a game. And you're doing that with a company that has routinely, like, lied and cheated and just been terrible. Like, I'm not going to lie. Even when I was a GameStop shopper, I very rarely pre-ordered anything. Well, in regards to, like, the console, the console's a different beast because, yeah, that it's a very limited run. Right. And I did hear some horror stories a couple weeks ago of, I believe it was over in the UK, there were some either sites or actual stores that took too many pre-orders right. than what they were going to be allocated. So they had to start dropping people. Right. Um, but in regards to pre-ordering the games, whenever you put that pre-order in on a game, it would basically send a pre-order to the, the manufacturer or whatever, say this game stop needs this one copy, this one copy. And they would end up, you know, having so many copies the the amount that are pre-ordered and they would ship some more that would be bought you know in store if somebody didn't pre-order it so if that game stop were to be shut down they can transfer those shipments to I mean, another game stop still, which they do that on a store that does that has no, no track record like th their track record is atrocious like you're still relying on a store like that's fine you can lay out how it's supposed to be done the right way i don't trust them to do that and i don't think anybody should they're they're a terrible company who's lies and cheats and does all sorts of awful things like i can tell you how to bake a cake but if you don't know how to bake i'm not going to trust you to bake that cake i'm just not I'm not going to pay you to bake that cake like it's it's not going to happen like that's what i'm saying i'm not saying that they don't have things in place to do it correctly. I'm saying that I don't think they can do it correctly. I don't trust them to do it correctly. They've lied to us too many times. They've cheated us too many times. And they're just not going to get my money anymore. I mean, I think that that might be a separate case because they... Yeah. It's all in about regards, trust, man. Especially yeah, with the pre -order, and, and, and it's all about trust. You're trusting that's what them I was, to give you something. That's what I was going to get to is the fact that... Like, if your trust is eroded, mm -hmm. then, yeah, you're not going to trust the basic right. things. But in my own personal thoughts, I think that that's something that it's still a pretty sound thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, you know, again, you know, fool me once, you know. I mean, that's but... fair. You haven't had any bad experiences. I'm not necessarily trying to, like, call you specifically out. I'm saying that, like, as a company, I don't think that, like, I, 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 they're just not trustworthy. And because they're not trustworthy, they're not going to get my business anymore. Like, I know that when I pre-order something through Steam, I'm going to get it at an exact time, period. Like, and it's going to go right into my computer and it's going to be fine. I mean, there is something to it, too, that the world's kind of going digital. And I don't think that physical pre-orders is going to be a thing much longer anyway. No, yeah, I mean that's I mean that's a that's a whole separate thing. I think GameStop's in trouble from that aspect is that they are a company relying on I mean it's the same with renting videos. My my family video in town just shut down. Like yeah. there are no video rental places and there won't be in the next like year. In 5 there won't be GameStops because everybody's going to be buying them digitally. It's just going to be the way it is. And what even if you're you... not buying it digitally, you're going to buy it. You're going to have to order it through the, oh, excuse me. You're going to have to order it through the internet because these physical locations will not be able to uh, make enough revenue to keep their doors open. What do you think that, what is, what is like the one thing that GameStop has to do to turn things around? Oh, if you I... were to, if you were to point to one single thing, be like, there, that's the problem. What do you think it would be? Oh man, that's tough. That's really tough because I almost feel like, I feel like that'd be saying, um, that'd be saying to somebody who has a giant hole in the boat, uh, and the boat's sinking, how do we fix the boat? You know, like, 
I don't know that there's a thing that you can do to keep the boat from sinking is the problem. Like how well, how do you make how do you make an industry that is ceasing to exist viable? Well, I think that that comes from what my point was going what my thing I think was going to be is they've kind of started to do this a little bit but i think they need to be more bold with it i think that they need to fully pivot you know what they need to do i feel like they should partner with the manufacturers and have gamestop be like a house that houses the three families so you go into these locations and in each corner you have the sony corner the microsoft corner and the nintendo corner and you buy through them from the brick and mortar store. So GameStop kind of to some degree, but it, they rely more so on their revenue comes from people trading in games, stuff like that. And granted, that's something that would go by the wayside with this. But if you were to make GameStop, not a place slash store, but an idea of this is where you go if you want to go through Sony. So like there's no more worrying about like, oh, well, you know, this pre-order, I'm trying to get this from here, whatever. Somebody walks into the GameStop location to pre-order this, that, and the other game because they've certain uh, manufacturers like Sony have moved away from selling like digital currency and everything from GameStop stores. Why wouldn't... GameStop just be a house that houses these place these locations basically and get a cut of the revenue from having those stores have physical brick and mortar locations like Nintendo there's a Nintendo store in New York there's right. some stuff you can only get there or buy online they want to do stuff with collectibles and everything too and they, they they do they have over the years but there's still some stuff that you can only get physically from these sites as they are if you make the stores be hubs more so than actual stores and just take a cut of the profits which is money that's being sent out anyways and it's money that i feel like these companies would like to have in their own pockets because that's another uh cluster of people they can't reach those who don't want to buy stuff online if you make it a physical store location that somebody can walk into I think that could change the idea of what GameStop is and they could very well make money a different way. Now, whether or not this is something that's viable across the board in all regions and everything that I don't know, I'm sure something like that would work like out in California, something like that, something here in Youngstown, Ohio, maybe not so much. Um, okay. Well, I will say this. I think that they would benefit from, um, I don't know if I would use the word pivot, but picking a lane, uh, they tend to like, yeah. they, they tend to very desperately like, we're going to sell action figures now. That's how we'll make our money. You know, like, and, and it, it's like, okay, are you a game store? Are you an action figure store? Are you a collectible store? What are you selling? Figure that out. Streamline it to that. So I will agree with that. However, I still think your your idea has a fundamental problem. And that fundamental problem is, that nobody's going to be buying physical games. Like, that's the pro. Like, they're trying to sell a thing that people aren't buying anymore. I mean, it's, it's, if, if nobody in the world wanted apples anymore, you wouldn't be able to sell apples. It doesn't matter how you brand the apples, it doesn't matter how you put the apples in people's faces. If nobody wanted apples, you can't sell apples. It's that simple. That's, yeah. And that's what I was getting at with like the digital currency and right. stuff like and that. that would- there are some. Oh, sorry, just real quick. Uh, there are some like around Christmas time, stuff like that, holidays and even birthdays and everything sometimes. You know, there are the grandmas who go out to find something for their kid and they want to know where, you know, the gift card is or anything like that for the storefront. They could, you know, sell that gift card through a physical storefront. But I mean, I yeah, mean, you're right. That's- but at the same time, is that going to be enough revenue to keep physical brick and mortar doors open when you could just be selling that online? And and the other thing is you have to convince these companies uh, to sell their special com- collectibles at a brick and mortar store that they don't own and control, which 
is a big thing. Like Nintendo has a Nintendo store because Nintendo can have a Nintendo store. Like, like right. that's like, and Nintendo controls everything about the Nintendo store. So I, I it's going to be hard for Nintendo to give that up to GameStop. You know what I mean? Like, I, I still think the other thing is too the grandma's thing, which is a lot of the internet's, you know, conversation about like misbuys and stuff like that. The grandma's thing is also kind of selling it thing, settling itself because I'm 39. You know what I mean? And I know how to digitally pre-order shit. <laughs> I, I think that yeah. a lot of the people who were grandmas who needed that kind of stuff. Well, they're not going to be around much longer, and the people who are going to be grandmas are going to have a perfect <laughs> understanding of how Steam and digital orders work. I mean, not to be morbid or anything, but that's how <laughs> time happens. Like, these grandmas and grandpas are going to be us, and we know how yeah. to do that stuff. So, like, I, I think that that like, th- there's tons of people who say that, like, like, oh, well, we'll get the grandmas and grandpas around holiday. How many more? Because those grandmas and grandpas, you know, they, they're not going to be around that much longer. Which, so like, which is, yeah, and that's that's a fair criticism too. But, I mean, it, if they were to move to this hypothetical model, I mean, that would either A, buy them time to figure something else out. Right. Or I'm B, not necessarily- at, at least be able to hit like the reset right. button to reestablish themselves. Was a bad idea. I'm not trying to like say it was a bad idea. I'm just saying that like, I feel like the fundamental problem with GameStop is they're trying to sell a thing that less and less people want to buy. Yeah. In that way. I mean, people want to buy video games, but nobody wants to buy it that way, you know? So like, I feel like that's the problem for GameStop right now is, Honestly, if I were to do GameStop, I would give people more value for their trades. I'd give them more of a reason oh, to bring yeah. games in to trade. I think that's one of the biggest hits that they've taken is is they want to make all this money off trades, but then they don't give you any money back. So people start saying, well, I'm not going to take this game in for a quarter. You know, right. I yeah, would definitely that's... I'd definitely give more for trades. That would definitely reinvigorate the physical game. Lobby. Like give more to it. Like the, I'm. The reason oh, I'm sorry, ahead. we've been on this subject for so long, but I just got another point. <laughs> no, uh, you're good. I mean, we've already established earlier. There's not much going on this right, week. So right. the reason the housing market and, and the housing market has folded many times, but it always comes back. There's an ebb and flow to the housing market. The reason that that is, is that any house you buy has value on the back end. Might go down, might go up, but if you buy a piece of land or you buy a house, that house immediately gives you equity, right? If you want things to continue to just like be immune to the ravages of time and, uh, and um, trends and that sort of thing, you need to make the physical thing always have equity. So like if you want – and I think that's one of the reasons games – as a physical medium has lasted so long. I mean, movies really isn't there anymore. Uh, like, I feel uh, like the reason is, is that when you buy a game, you can trade that game in for some amount of money. So the, the thing is, is if you want video games to stay this like physical medium, you need to make them worth something at all times, period. If you have a physical game, it is worth money, period. And that has gone down and down and down over the years. And that's why people go to the digital place more and more and more because there's no equity. There's no back end. You're not making an investment. You're just buying a game to play. And if you're just buying a game to play, who cares how you get it? And to piggyback off of that immediately, I'm sure we're going to see some sort of shift in first party Microsoft title trade in values now because of Game Pass Ultimate. Or just Game Pass in general, that is. Right. I mean, Ultimate 2, sure. But, I mean, you pay $10, $15 a month, whatever tier you're picking, mm-hmm. to get access to all these first-party Microsoft games. Right. Well, of course, somebody can go buy a physical copy for $60. Oh, Why wow. they would not have jumped on Game Pass at this point, right. uh, that's a question that only that individual can answer. Um, but I mean, trading it in, who is going to spend 10, even $10 on a used copy of a game that shows up on game pass. And that's, I think that's one of the biggest 
the biggest red flags that GameStop has to consider at this point, because even we've already had game with games with gold, PlayStation Plus games. Uh, we have Game Pass now, and on top of that, uh, Mike uh, Sony's going to be rolling out the their mm-hmm. Game Pass the or not Game Pass, yeah, um, yeah. PlayStation Plus the the collection right. that's going to be part of PlayStation Plus. So these right. are all things now games that you can literally get anywhere and in sony's case you're not even paying anything extra if you already have playstation plus right so the reason so like you really have to look at what is the reason people buy physical games and you have to look at it beyond to play the game because the playing the game isn't going to be the reason anymore because there's it's so easy to play it you know, so you, you have know. to have. So the other reasons that you buy a game is for equity or as a collector. Stella, you know, um, it's not that entertaining. <laughs> you know, there's actually a video on this channel made by yours truly <laughs> who talks a little bit about why I don't trade in games anymore. And a lot of the beats that we're hitting here show up in that video so if you want a little bit more of (laughs) expansion on these points that we're making go ahead and take a look at that video because i want that video to be in a top 10 on the (laughs) omfd because not gonna lie i was a little sad it didn't make it this month you know a lot of (laughs) stuff that made it was real weird too (laughs) like i was like why is this here um but i I actually really liked your video i think that I think that your video was really good. Uh, there was a couple of things I completely disagreed with, of course. Um, right. But, like, one of the things that you made a point at was the, the lack of value. Yeah, uh, the, exactly. The lack of value was a big deal. Yeah, and that's – and that – really was one of the one of the first reasons not the only you know reason why but one of the first reasons i considered not trading games in anymore was the fact that i was only getting offered like two three dollars for a game so i can take a whole stack of like eight nine ten things to maybe be able to get a game that's like thirty dollars used and and I I agree with that. I agree with that thought process. It, it, even when I was trading in games heavily, it was always about like finding a place where they're going to give you a special deal to get the price up, you know. And, right. And I think I don't agree with your thought about what's a game worth money wise. I I don't agree with that. That was the only thing I disagreed with was where you were like, well, it's only two hours. It should only be worth this much. I totally agree. If it's only two hours, it shouldn't be a sixty dollar game. But that's a whole argument for another story. Right. I, I think that like the trade in value is the thing. Like if you don't offer people money for the trade in, you like GameStop is the only person out there left deciding the value of the games on the back end. And they have decided that the games on the back end are useless and then they decided to make their that their entire like goal of making money you can't you can't say to everybody in the world games are useless games are useless once you sell them back and then try to make all your money off selling them back right like that's the problem you've made them useless you've told us you've told the american public that games have no value on the back end unless you are a weird collector well not a weird collector but a collector or that's it that's it that's the only reason to own a game physically. I mean, like logically, not not like like obviously you have your collections, but that's the only reason to own a game is to collect it. That's it. Pretty much. Whereas you could have said they're worth money and then people would actually be like buying and selling them. You know, that's how I used to do stuff. But they drop the value so much that you've told everybody it's useless that way. And then you try and make all your money that way. It's ridiculous. But we we got to move on. Yeah, I just looked at the uh, at the timer here, and I did not realize we were talking about this as long as we, we were. We were talking about this, this for a really long time, a really long time. So, horrible gaming podcast. All right, we're gonna skip our second talking point since uh, we really talked about that first one. Uh, I'm sorry if we bored anybody out there because that was a long talking point. Um, 
But we're going to do odds and ends. Uh, that's where we like to collect little stories uh, that don't really warrant an entire talking point and just kind of like rattle them off and say a couple things about them. Uh, and I have a lot of odds and ends this week. So I'll go ahead and start us off uh, with a fun one. Uh, man, PS5, they have a launch game, a real launch game. And you know what it is, Neil? Oh, man, what is it? It's Bug Snacks. Hi. Uh, it is a launch PS5 game. <laughs> uh, mm, man, I can't wait to go out, buy that PS5 with all that hardware, and then play some Bug Snacks. <laughs> yeah, and I believe I had seen too. Like, it's not even like a, a sixty dollar full retail mm-hmm. game. It's only like twenty five, thirty bucks, something along those lines. You know, I I do got to give the the developers that credit because they. I mean, yeah, they really made something that ain't anywhere else. You can't find that. Like that is the only game of its type. You know. You know what it kind of gave me vibes of? What is Spore? Yeah, it gave me that. I liked Spore, though. I know Spore wasn't a big hit for uh, Sid Meier, but I actually really liked Spore. The only thing I didn't like about Spore is that you could it was impossible for your society to be completely peaceful. Uh, I never really played it. So you never really played it? Of it? I know of it, but I yeah, I didn't actually play it. It was cool. Like It definitely had its bugs or whatever, but basically you'd start as like a single cell. And then yeah. you'd, you'd start collecting cells and then evolve into a creature. And then you'd evolve from that creature into a creature. And then you'd eventually get to like Sid Meier building civilizations and whatnot. The problem was is like you had to get to a point where you started building weapons or somebody wiped you out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess no way to suck. play peaceful. Um. Well, uh, I got one here. Uh, did you hear who uh, one of the next Mortal Kombat 11 characters is? I think I think I think I know what you're gonna say. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Rambo is mm-hmm. gonna be in Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, I uh, thought he was already in it. I thought they just added him. Well, yeah. Well, they have. They now have the Terminator. Mm-hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger ass Arnold Schwarzenegger is in the game. Mm-hmm. Right. I believe I don't know if he does Robocop the voice though. Too. Robocop too. So and, you and can have he you does can have do all the three voice. of them. Uh Peter Weller does do the voice of Robocop for that. I know that for a fact. Yeah. Because I am a Robocop fan and uh that's just the information I needed to know. <laughs> However, have you seen the trailer for uh the Rambo? unveil for i haven't Mortal Kombat. watched the trailer i do know that stallone is doing the rambo voice but i haven't watched the trailer itself yeah yeah he is but um it's kind of bad because uh as we have alluded to on this show before uh sylvester stallone probably drank a bunch of motor oil in over the top <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> his voice has changed over the years it has uh, and it does not fit <laughs> it doesn't fit at all. I mean, I, I don't know. There's something about that, though. Like, I'd rather have the nostalgia of having his voice and it just not be right than having some dude try to do a Sylvester Stallone Rambo impersonation. Which, yeah, is true. Like, There's I'd rather. I mean, you're already so out on a limb comedy wise, you know, that like. Like, you got Rambo in Mortal Kombat. Like, who cares what he sounds like at that point? Right. Give him Stallone's voice. I don't care. That only makes me laugh more, and that makes me happier. Like, I don't know. They they were asking, uh, I think IGN was doing a poll of what what they should put in Mortal Kombat next. Please, John McClane. Mm. It'd be okay. If we're doing 80s action heroes, John McClane. I'm all for John McClane. No, see that needs to be a separate game of nothing but eighties action heroes fighter. Oh, oh man, dude! If what are they called? Nevermore. I I can't remember what their company name is, but oh, Nether Realm. Nether Realm. If they did that, if they if they, if that was like their third, like they had Injustice and they had Mortal Kombat, and then in between they were like, we're gonna just do eighties action stars. Oh man, man, it's too bad I, because every year they, I buy that. Man, they could have very well called it Last Action Hero if it wasn't already a movie. Oh, oh man. But this is not 
<laughs> this is not the, the horrible arena. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, right. That's that's for another day. Um, All right. So uh, what else you got? Uh, I got a kind of a depressing one. Uh, there oh, no. is there is a game called Indivisible released by 505 uh, Studios. And uh, that game is amazing. It really is amazing. Uh, it's still on Games Pass. Uh, it's it's one I recommended to you a bunch of times because it's it's got like Metrovania elements, but it's an RPG and it's like yeah, it's very cool. It's a very cool game. Like the RPG feels like a fighting game when you're in a fight, but it's with all of your characters. It's just so cool, uh, so cool and unique. Unfortunately, uh, it has been shut down. Uh, yeah. due to the Me Too stuff around uh, not 505, but the actual studio itself, which I did not make a note of which what studio that's called, but the guy who made it, Mike Z, um, he, he's been accused of like numerous like like basically sexual assaults within his company. And um, because of that, they've shut down the Indivisible stuff, which is real big bummer because... There was all this Kickstarter stuff that actually got backed on the game that they can't do now, which was right. like like people were going to draw up their own characters and they were going to put it in the game, like backers that were high enough and stuff like that. And we're just never going to get to see that, which is a real bummer. So yeah. uh, just to cap it, you know, guys, uh, penis is in the pants until it is requested. Okay, please, please. Can we? No as a society, unsolicited penis. You know, I tell you. I'm going to go off on a rant. It's going to get our show canceled. Um, okay. <laughs> I am not taking anything away from being a woman or being a minority or anything. Uh, sometimes it's hard to be a white dude. And not not because oh. of that Proud Boy stuff. Not because of that. Not racist. But because everybody expects the worst out of you so fast. I was in this. Uh, I had to go get x-rays of my knees because they're shot the other day. And... Yeah. Uh, the lady was like, I had to put on a gown, right? Uh, yeah. Because this was a retake because they screwed it up the first time. And I sat down on the thing and they just left the door open. The door to the x-ray thing was just open the entire time. My butt's just hanging out. And finally I was like, you know, I don't want to be a jerk, but can you shut that door? And she was like, actually, we can't. I was like, what? Right. And she was like, well, we can't because I'm a woman and you're a guy and it's just against the policy. And I was like, seriously, I've got my butt hanging out. Like, and she's like, well, usually that's what makes it worse. I'm like, seriously, you can't shut that door because it is just assumed that if you do, because my pants are off, I'm going to rape you. It just sucks. It sucks. And it's not, it's, it's white dudes fault. White dudes, please stop raping people. Please for like 10 minutes, just stop raping and oppressing people so that other white dudes who don't rape and oppress people can like have a door shut when their butt is hanging out. I hear silence from you. Did I say yeah. something bad? Do you think I offended no. people? I, I mean, yeah. I, I'm not saying that we're good. You know what I'm, you see what I'm saying, right? I, 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 I know what you're saying. I just I feel like, did I say it wrong? Do you think no, it's going to be misconstrued? I just, I just you did, you did to, silence there and I was very scared. I'm trying to hard, I'm trying to hard pass on the whole. <laughs> I mean, I, like I said, I, we are wrong 90% of the time. And that's the problem. We're so wrong that anybody who isn't wrong is just assumed to be this monster. Yeah. Like I'm not a monster. I've, I've I've had a hard time having sex with women, you know. Like I I don't know. I'm gonna have to cut this part out. <laughs> I'm about to say this is this is taking weird turns. No, but you see what? Like, it's just assumed that like we're just walking around raping and destroying people, and it's because so many of us have, you know. But like, because so many of us have, the people who haven't, it's just assumed. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks for leaving me hanging, Neil. Thanks sorry. for not contributing at all, making me feel I, like a lunatic. I, I Great just... co-host work, dude. <laughs> Great co-host work. Jesus, couldn't even like temper it or anything. I just I was trying to find thing. something to say. <laughs> it just okay. All right. This is gonna be misconstrued everywhere. That's fine. That's fine. It's your turn. It's your turn, you son of a bitch. 
Okay. <laughs> um, well, um, Avengers, the player base is starting to drop off pretty rough. Um, after roughly a month of launch, after having over 28,000 players at its peak on a day, uh, we have now been somewhere around 2,400 players daily. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, Crystal Dynamics has promised that there's going to be more stuff coming. You know, there's new heroes, uh, new events, I'm sure, are on, on their way. Um, but from what it sounds like, me having not really played the game outside of a little bit of the beta, um, it sounds like pretty much once the campaign's over, there's not much outside of grinding or doing the same things over and over for people to do. Um, so, right. I mean, I don't know. You've, you've played it a bit I've more than I, bit so I can't, I, yeah, I, I can't really speak to that part of it but I beat uh, the main story and yeah. then i moved into the the grind and i actually never completed the grind because it was so tedious um i can't i can't say this enough for games of service people man uh you know it's not the loot system that drives people away uh it, it's the lack of content you need to give us variation if you want us to grind something out we have to have a way to make it fun right and like uh there's no like <laughs> I actually really like the storyline and I really like the mechanics of the game, but that game isn't going to be a good game until there's a lot of work. And I'm talking specifically about the post-launch stuff. I mean, it doesn't help that they, their first, like their second or third patch after it came out, there was like 1000 bugs that they fixed. Like how is there a thousand bugs in that game? You know, like, to start with that you've got to patch it. And I feel like right off the bat, you're working uphill just like Anthem was. Right. Um, like now you have to spend all that time fixing bugs in a game that nobody's going to play because you don't have anything new for them to do. Uh, the other thing is there's no super villains. There's, there's, there's nothing interesting about the post game. The story is amazing, but once you get to that post game, there's just nothing interesting to it. I was trying to get one of my characters to max just to say I did it. And I didn't, I think, uh, my Captain America's at like level 44 or 45, and I just I, I couldn't do it. The other thing is, too, some of their biggest, most cool stuff, uh, you have to have other people to play with, and that player base has been gone for a little bit now. Like, this isn't actually news. So I could never find anybody to play and stay in my game with me. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if they made their events be other super villains that just show up yes. and like you have to do like a whole baby like micro storyline yeah. with them i feel like that would be fantastic or even like you what know, i said like a few weeks ago where you could just do like a, a nemesis system where where villains right. would just show up and attack you during missions that you were on like if you just had the the same missions over and over again but at any point in time a super villain could just show up and screw everything up you know that would be good too. Yeah, yeah I just there was just no variation in that post game, and I feel like they kind of phoned in the post game. They just assumed that it was good enough, and uh, that's a real problem for me. Yeah, and I think that speaks more to again what we were talking about, you know, the uh, previous week with Godfall and them trying to not label themselves as game of service because they have that it's got that negative connotation to it as it is right now, you know, like be the game that breaks the mold, just right. be the game that breaks the right. mold and make it a thing. And or just, I, I, I go ahead. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, but just no, make you're the good. game, just make the game and stop worrying about the terms behind the game or what you want to do with it. Like, I feel like there's so much cost analysis that goes into some of these things. Like, How do we give it a tail? How do we do this? Just make your game. Just make your game, put it out there, we'll decide if it's good or not. And I feel like this game suffered from that. I feel like this game suffered from uh, uh, trying to do too many things and not doing any of them, not committing to any of them. Like, if you want to make a games of service, make a games of service game. But you have to make a games of service game. And you didn't. You didn't make a games of service game. You didn't really make a story game. You half-assed everything. So all you have is this, like, collection of really great voice performances basically 
Yeah. I thought if there was any game that could have really done it with what they had, it was going to be Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like, I can come up with 14 <clears throat> ideas of how they could have made that end game at least a little bit better, you know? And like, yeah. I understand not delaying it because they were a little bit, I feel like they were a little bit in too deep when the previews started to go negative to them, you know? Because they had just yeah. so many like deals with everybody, which probably is part of the problem but like i don't think they could have delayed it because of all the sponsors they had right but when it comes out you go to work immediately on the things that people say they don't like and they didn't they didn't do that at all you know yeah there hasn't been any real substantial like i've gone back to it a couple of times it's the same five things over and over again still um, which is unfortunate yeah, uh, you know, talking about another bad one, Crucible shutting down after only three months of being operational. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, um, I never played it, nor did I watch any real footage from it. It was like, a, it was supposed to be like an Overwatch, wasn't it? Uh, to my knowledge, yeah. Um, I yeah, I I don't know. I feel like that... IGN blasted it. I think they got like a four or five. Yeah, because Cru- wasn't it wasn't Crucible the one that was being made by Amazon? Yeah, there's two games that were being made by Amazon. It was Crucible and it's uh, New World, and New World has still has a groundswell around it. I've never even heard of New World. How have you not heard of New World? How are you my co-host and you've not heard of New World? That w- you, you're getting a fake demerit there. Uh, New oh. World. It's kind of an MMO, uh, but not really. Um, and they've had it in and out of like early access a bunch of times. Uh, but basically, it's it it it's both both PVB and PVE. It looks very interesting. Um, some people have said they love it. Some people have said they hated it. You know that sort of thing. But it still has like a presence, I guess, with people. Whereas Crucible was like. Hey, we got a game called Crucible, and nobody liked it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, I have two more. You want me to just snag one of them? or sure. I, I only got one more, and mine's real small. Oh, you know what? Go ahead. Uh, Eric's is in Cyberpunk, man. I just want to say that. That's really cool. He's, like, I guess, like, one of the fictional ads. He plays the the like centerpiece of one of the like fictional ads you can see on TVs. Um, he, he posted a tweet about it. I thought that was just really cool that he's in. I mean, Eric's is the coolest YouTube channel out there in my opinion. Like it's everything that I would want my channel to be at some point, you know? Um, so it's just cool. I thought it was cool. (laughs) Yeah. I think we're going to start seeing more over the years, more integration and recognition, of youtubers and streamers yeah. and everything like that as actual figureheads within the game industry actually literally just today before we even started recording uh we had stopped at the gas station real quick on our way home and i walked inside and i was looking at the energy drinks and they have energy drinks now that are themed after youtubers and streamers mm-hmm. and the only one that i even recognized was pewdiepie but like he's got his own energy drink now yeah three yeah. other dudes have their own energy drink and it's yeah. like wow like yeah well, it's just gearbox, crazy gearbox took all their voices from youtubers and streamers they like, what? Uh, in Borderlands oh, 3, the, uh... like, all of them are, like, YouTubers and streamers. That oh, I didn't know work. that. Yeah, most of them are. Like, if you look them up, they're mostly, like, st- streamers or YouTubers, yeah. Yeah, I know they had a lot of the employees that work for Gearbox do voices. Yeah. Because there was that whole, you know, firestorm yeah. with the guy that did Claptrap's voice, but... Um... Well, and they love to do that. Gearbox loves to be, like... Oh no, we're gonna use these guys because it'll be cool. When in fact they're like, we're gonna use these guys because we could pay them way less. Um. All right. So uh, the last one that I have here, it's uh, it's actually one of the bigger things that happened this past week. But um, I don't I don't know how much of a uh, conversation that we could get into about it. But uh, Sony actually released an official teardown for the PS5. Yeah. Um, 
And there are some interesting things that I had noticed when watching the video. Um, first off, the SSD uh, for the system is physically broken down into three separate memory chips with an actual physical hardware controller uh, to relegate it. So basically that means if anything ever goes with the SSD in the system, like your console is just dead unless you send it to Sony. You can't, there's no sort of access bay that you can get a new one. Like even with the PlayStation 3, it just used a standard hard drive. And you could get a new hard drive and slap it in there and just, you know, do a system restore and it would be good to go. Uh, there will be none of that with the PlayStation 5 for quite certain. That's pretty um, messed up. Well, I mean, it very well could be the same exact thing for the Xbox Series consoles. But, I mean, they haven't done official teardowns yet. I'm sure that there's going to be external sites that are going to start doing teardowns and that information will come out then unless Microsoft wants to do it themselves. But um, also uh, the main, the main focus of the system is cooling. Right. I don't know if you watch this teardown video. Uh, the fan is immense. Yeah, it is I saw it. huge. I saw a the long... fan. I didn't watch the whole video, but I saw like the actual teardown. So yeah, there was yeah there was the the fan on the inside, but there's also a huge uh, heat sink and evaporation style heat sink that takes up like a third of the whole console <laughs> on the inside. That's insane. So well from. Uh, from everything that we've heard, I mean, it runs good. I mean, we haven't had any demo units sent out to like news outlets and stuff like that really yet. Uh, outside of, you know, PlayStation's own news briefings. So we'll see what happens right. when it comes out. But I mean, with that much focused on cooling with the exhaust and everything with it, I can only imagine that it would stay pretty quiet. Um, on top of that, too, uh, those white side panels, I know they had mentioned it before, but uh, I'm just going to bring it up again. Those white side panels literally just pop off, which is really cool. Hmm. So, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, primarily the focus for that is, you know, for cleaning the fan and everything out and the cooling and everything again. Right. But it would be very easy to just take those panels off, spray paint them. Sony can license out some special ones. You know, you could technically make your system black in that regards. Yeah. If everybody's worried about the fact that it's black and white, literally pop those panels off and get them painted, get them dipped, anything, any way you wanted to do that. That's your console's cool. black, your console's a different color. So yeah, I think that's something we lost that with the Xbox 360 faceplates, which is something that yeah. I wanted them to bring back in the future. I love that customization like that. Yeah, you can still get like skins and stuff, but yeah, it's not. Quite that's the not same. the same. Yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. I know what you mean. I, I will say people like customization options and that's a good thing. So yeah. <laughs> Horrible Gaming Podcast. That brings us to the end of the show, the moment you've all been waiting for, the main event, the Horrible Arena. What is the Horrible Arena for those of you who have not watched before? Well, first of all, you should watch more or listen more, you know, whatever, ear holes, eye holes, however you want to consume it. What we do is each of the co-hosts will pitch you, the listener, a video game. We will pitch you the developer, the title, and what that game is. We pitch it based on pre-existing criteria that we take turns deciding. Now, last week, Neil decided modified sports game, meaning it has to be sports in spirit but not an actual sport or just a straight sport thing that people just run around playing. Like, you can't just be Madden. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to pitch these games to you guys, and you guys can take to all the places, the comments below, and you can tell us what you would spend your hard-earned money on, and then we use that to decide the horrible arena. Right now, we are in the new 52. Neil is up 7-2, to two, so I'm hoping to take a point back here. Uh, so, I get to go first. The quantum coin dropped on me, and I'm very excited about this. I'm not going to give you the title till the end because it's crazy Ooh. and it would just make you laugh. So the developer is CyberConnect2. They specifically developed Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, 
for Bandai Namco. Now, my game is the future, all right? But in a different future, a future in which the human people, uh, humans have learned how to harness their chi with a weapon called the focus. Now, the focus is like a suit that they put on themselves. There's also a special ball called the spirit ball. Now, this ball allows you to siphon your focus into it, your chi, your energy. And of course, we're humans, so we designed a sport over it. So my game's title will be Project Super Dodgeball Hyper EX Edition. That's right, 3v3 <laughs> in a court. You, what you do is you basically grab the ball, you charge it with your energy, and you hurl it in some sort of weird attack. Like the ball can be manipulated into a disc which pierces armor or takes out uh, uh, defenses. Or it can split into multiple balls and attack from different directions. Of course, you have a parry, parry catch button. If you hit it in the right way, uh, you can catch the ball, which actually feeds the chi into you that your opponent tossed, allowing your attack to get even bigger and more scary. Now, the game itself would work kind of like a fighting game. You would be able to switch between each of the three people on the fly, but you would be able to move them normally. Each of the other two, you can set, well, each of your characters, you can set their AI, uh, their AI setup, like how they work beforehand. So you have full control over your team. You can also build your team from the uh, ground up. They will have stats. You will build them. They will advance. They will gain experience, the whole nine yards. Uh, of course, there will be a multiplayer that won't involve the campaign, whatever. Um, but basically it'll be like a fighting situation. Like it's almost like a fight, like you will throw the ball, they will have to catch the ball to cl claim the energy, but they have to try and decide whether they should be dodging the ball or they should be catching the ball. If they don't catch the ball and they get hit, they take the damage. When your character gets knocked out, when the focus gets destroyed, they're eliminated. When either team has no players, the match ends. So that's my, my project which is Hyper Super Dodgeball EX Plus Alpha. Interesting. Yeah, I'm very proud uh, of that one. So, you know, we're actually going to be going for a semi-same sort oh, of situation, no. but the mechanics, I there's enough to differentiate it, so it's not like up and down, but you'll see you'll see the uh you, you'll see the similarities here soon. Uh so mine is going to be called Project Blood Ball, and it's going to be made by Nether Realm. It's going to be a 6v6 football style game where you are basically fighting for control of the ball. However, it's literally fighting for control. So the object, the main object of the game is to take, get control of the ball and take it to the opponent's end to score like you would a touchdown. Uh, and that will get you five points. However, just possessing the ball will also get you a point per minute for the possession. So, you know, what's to stop somebody from hiding in a corner holding the ball the whole game? Well, whoever has the ball can be attacked. Whoever initiates a confrontation from the opposing team onto who is holding the ball, it then turns into a 1v1 traditional fighter. So at that point, you have the option. The person in possession of the ball can try and fight off the other person or the other person can try and fight the person holding the ball. They can kill the other person. If they kill the other person, then that team is down one member. And of course, you know, the person holding the ball, if they're killed, they automatically drop the ball. But the strategy comes in where the person who is holding the ball has the choice to drop it if they so desire. So if you're taking a beating with either the character that you're using or the person on your team, if you were doing it online with 6v6 online, if they're taking a beating from somebody else, they can choose to drop the ball and then the possession turns over to the individual who was attacking. So at that point, you can rally your team to go after that person. So it is a fighting game with a physical sports strategy to it. And of course, because it's made by nether realm, you better believe that there's going to be crazy, like fatality style <laughs> KOs and just unreasonable 
kills, crazy stages that have, you know, hazards all over the place. Um, I did hesitate to call it Blood Bowl because that is a thing that exists. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I called you out on almost, it too because I like Blood Bowl. I, I almost, I almost did that. Uh, but yeah, I feel like this something that could offer enough strategy and could offer some replay and some wide appeal that could get a lot of people on board with it. So that is going to be my project blood ball. Well, I mean, of course I was about to say, I, I didn't say how the game ends. Uh, you either kill the other team or you eat, you meet an arbitrary point limit or a timer that is running for the game runs out just like in real football. So yeah, that is my project project blood ball made by nether realm. All right, interesting. Two great projects. You guys out there, you have Project Blood Ball versus Project Hyper Super Dodgeball EX Plus Alpha. What are you guys going to spend your hard-earned money on? You can vote anywhere that we are about to mention. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right, everybody. That brings us to the end of the show and our shameless self-promotion. Neil, do you got anything to plug today? Well, uh, as we... We, I continue to allude to, I promise my next terrible talk is on its way. Uh, capture <laughs> is done for anything that I'm going to overlay onto it. And I literally just have to put it together. So I don't want to give a definite time frame, you know, to lock myself into anything, but it's definitely going to be at some point in October, it's going to come out. Okay. So there's that. Uh, and as well, have you guys watched Halo Infinite Road yet? Because if not, I think you probably should, because I got to say, I don't I don't want to toot our collective horn. But that first episode is just oh, mwah, mwah, it was oh amazing. it's great. It was, it was so much yeah. fun. It's it's all the Halo BS and shenanigans that mm -hmm. you can expect when you're playing with a friend. I, um, I, I do want to temper expectations, though, for the second episode, because the <laughs> second one, we even comment on it. It's, it's stark I, contrast. I've actually watched them uh, both, and the second one's pretty funny. I actually felt like the third one is the one that people should probably. Oh, yeah. Know, because we, yeah, I remember. we just kept yeah. going. Yeah. We were trying to get through the mission, and it we probably shouldn't have done that but yeah um still i did i really enjoyed doing the first episode i i thought this show is one of the best like we had the best chemistry chemistry in that first episode i think that you and i have ever had on a let's play together so yeah definitely 100 percent um so yeah so i'd like to also double hype that halo infinite road please check it out the second episode is coming out this thursday first episode is up now of course i have to one more time hype last friday the final episode of the final season of borderlands 330 went up the golden daca uh we got a copyright claim i don't even care i please go check it out it was the, it was the the end of the first let's play we ever did me and phil billy it was, uh, it was great very enjoyable um and i also want to point out this friday we will be releasing a new track from my brother's album red delirium which we are working on uh seemingly endlessly um and uh <laughs> but a new track and new music video featuring horizon zero dawn and i'm uh, very excited about this it's a much slower sadder melancholy track for him and uh for me it's probably one of the best things i've ever edited just straight edited myself so so i'm very excited about that and then other than that you guys can reach us on facebook at old man gaming dh on twitter at old man gaming nine you can join our discord the link is in the description below uh you can influence this and all of our shows from there uh and as per se usual please also check out omgw because we're doing a second season and uh, i put just endless amounts of work in that show because <laughs> i have so much fun doing it so uh, all right. Uh, I think that's it. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, yeah. Uh, give me one second real quick. Mm-hmm. Legion. Is it, is it your hey, pets? Is it go, pets related? Go on. Go, on. go, go, go. It's pets related. Had a it's always fight. pets related with him. <sighs> always pets related. Always for pets related. <laughs> Oh, yeah. If She's Neil, not paying attention. If Neil says, give me a second, it's pets related. Yeah. So, uh, I, like I had mentioned, there's a cat that we 
basically picked off the street because we're pretty sure it's somebody's. Uh-huh. And, and Is like, your cat we've been now? Tr- it sounds no, like it's, it's your cat. Now. No, it's not. I've been be monitoring cat. the situation via Facebook. Yeah. And I kind of feel oh, like yeah, it's that's your right. cat yeah. now. We've used in some of the chronicle of this. Yeah. So we we established ground rules. And like we felt bad that she was in the basement all the time. So we're like, okay, she can come upstairs. But we have to like, you know, keep an eye on this cat. Well, I had looked at my phone in the middle of this. And I realized that uh, my uh, that Kayla's using one of the smart speakers downstairs, which tells me she's probably doing something in the kitchen, given it's the kitchen one. So I know she's not paying attention (laughs) and the cat is upstairs. So I panic text her said, kitty is up here and still nothing. So then we paused and I had to go ahead and diffuse what could have been a violent fight that would have transpired through the microphone in the middle of everything (laughs) because she's not paying attention to the cat. (laughs) Oh yeah, no, we've already, we, we have much established that this cat is not staying with us. The only reason that we've had to hit the pause on like finding a home for this cat is because we took her to the vet and now like we, we've, established that this cat isn't actually somebody's which is astounding because she's like in great shape other than like she had uh she had like worms or whatever Uh. because she was outside so we gave her her medicine the first round of medicine but we're also going to get her vaccinated and everything because we figure it'd be a lot easier to rehome her if she's already got her shots and everything, then be like, Hey, somebody take this cat. Also, you're going to have to spend about $400 on it. Yeah. I, so I will say that yeah, people will be mu- very ha- much happier to take it vaccinated. If it was a dog, yeah. I'd take it, but it's not. And I don't take cats. Yeah. We, uh, we're, we're looking around. We have, uh, we have stuff on Facebook. What the fuck is she doing down there? It sounded like she was hitting on something with a hammer. Who, Kayla or yeah. the cat? No, Very not the cat. God, there. if it was the cat, yeah. You if it jumped was cat, subjects. It'd be I was funny. like, is yeah. the cat building an Iron well, Man I... suit? Because then you need to get out of the house. Right. No, like I'm sitting there and I just, I, I stopped there for a second because I heard a bunch of banging downstairs. I'm like, what in the fuck is going on? 